Good morning, students. So we come back after the puja holidays and begin a new chapter, savings and investments. So there is a difference in the meaning of these two words. So let us first understand what does savings mean? Savings mean that after a person receives his income, out of that income, he has certain expenditures to do. He spends his money and whatever is left with him after spending money from his income, that is called as savings. And every individual must save. We will quickly, we will just look into the importance of savings. But before that, let me tell you the meaning of the word investment also. Just saving is not important. Along with savings, this money that has been saved has to be invested. Invested means that there should be earnings from the savings that a person has done. And how will he earn money from his savings? We will study that. Either he can keep it in the bank, in different forms of accounts, or he can keep it in the post office, or he can buy shares of companies, he can invest it in LIC. So we will look into those ways as to how savings can be invested. So after saving money, every person must know how to invest it so that his money increases in quantity. So let us look into this as to what are the advantages or why must a person save. To begin with, savings help us to fulfill the needs of a family. As family grows in size, what we find is the expenses increase. In the beginning, a person may be a bachelor, so he has less expenses. So from his income, he may have saved some money for his future, for his children, for his old age. So hence savings is important. Next, savings is also important to meet emergencies. Suddenly, if we are in need of money for accidents, ill health, theft, natural calamities or any other, or sometimes we may find that we have serious problems at home, at such times we can draw from our savings. Then, the more you save, you have a secure old age. Individuals have great earning capacity and so they must save at a younger age so that this money can be utilized by them when they become old. Next, it savings helps to improve the standard of living. You can have a better lifestyle if you have planned savings. And people also save to buy property, invest in business, to buy a car, etc. Because unless you save, this big, big expenditures that we do is not possible from a monthly income. So hence for this reason, every person must save if he wants to acquire some form of property. And of course, last and the most important is, it gives a financial security to a person. He doesn't have to depend on his family members or on others if he has enough savings with him. So this is why a person must save. Now let us quickly look into the different opportunities that a person has for investing his money. First and the most important one is
So let us quickly look into the different ways by which we can save in a bank. What we can do is that we can put our money in a savings account by opening a savings account in a bank. Very popular among households where we find that households keep their extra cash because not only does it, is it safe, it also helps them to earn an income. Then for businessmen, we have the current account where they can safely keep their money. And at the same time, what we find is that it will also give them the facility of unlimited deposits and withdrawals. Fixed deposit. When we have enough money, which we can keep away for a certain period of time, say a few months or a few years, we don't need it. Then this idle cash or this extra money that we have will help us to earn a huge amount of interest. And banks pay the maximum amount of interest on fixed deposits. And lastly, you can, a person can open a recurring deposit also in a bank. A recurring deposit means every month the person will deposit a fixed amount of money. And at the end of the term, he, may have, he can choose one year, two years, three years. And at the end of the term, not only does he receive his own money, but along with that, he also receives a certain amount of interest. So, his, so the quantity of money increases. So in this way, what we find is that people can easily save in a bank. Followed by that, A person can also save money in a post office because post office also has a savings bank. So one can open a post office savings account which where, from where you can withdraw money by the help of withdrawal slips or an ATM card. Then post office has got monthly income schemes where an individual can deposit a, keep a certain amount of money and he can receive a fixed monthly income every month, especially suitable for senior citizens. A person, single person can deposit 4.5 lakhs, but if it is a joint account, one can deposit up to 9 lakhs. And the post office also offers a fixed deposit or time deposit scheme where we have to keep the money for a fixed period of time and we are able to earn a higher rate of interest. Just like the banks, post office also has a recurring deposit account where a person can deposit a definite amount of money every month, say 200 rupees every month for a certain period of time and after that he will get back the money along with a certain rate of interest. Then people, senior citizens also are liable to get a higher rate of interest in senior citizen saving deposit account. So that way a person can have a source of income from the savings he has invested in the post office. Followed by that, next. <coughs> people also deposit money in LIC. In LIC, we can buy a life insurance policy where a person may be able to get, uh, it's, it's a risk sharing plan where we find that this insurance scheme assures the family of a definite amount of money after the person's death. And sometimes there are certain policies where a person receives a monthly income in his old age if he has invested earlier in his life. Then we have the MediClaim, where, which is a health insurance policy where we can give a certain amount of our income and save every year 
and get the full benefit of it when we are hospitalized. Then we can claim the hospital bills. Followed by that, people have another source of income, that is if they open a public provident fund account, that is what we find here, that many post offices and banks have this type of account, where a person like a businessman who doesn't have a provident fund after his retirement. Generally, people, when they retire from a service, they get a lump sum amount of money which has been deducted from the salary, and we call it provident fund, in which both the employee and the employer has contributed. So the sum grows over the years, and the lump sum amount is given to the employee on his retirement. But in case of self-employed people who don't have a provident fund, in that case they can open a public provident fund account either with the bank or with the post office. And the earlier the better. And in this account they can deposit a certain amount of money which they will get back after the age of 58 and along with a rate of interest. So this is another form of investment. Next we come to shares and debentures. People can buy shares and debentures of government companies or public sector companies or of private sector companies and we find that they will enjoy a part of the profit of the company, which is given to them in the form of dividend. Then sometimes people also invest in house, land, gold, which over the years grows in value and forms a source of income for them. So these are certain sound investments or good methods of investment which a person can adopt to keep his savings and be safe. We have to remember another thing. When you save money and convert it into an investment, it should be a safe investment where you have less chances of losing your money. So every individual must keep in mind that the place where he has invested his money should be a safe place. After this, next we move on to how to open a bank account. What is the procedure of opening a bank account? So what we find is that to open a bank account, there are certain formalities which has to be done. First of all, we have to pick up a form from the bank, which can, and in this form, we find that this bank account can be opened by a single person or two or three individuals, and the maximum deposit limit in the beginning is 25,000 in case of an individual, followed by 50,000 in the case of a joint account. And what we find is that here, if more than one lakh is withdrawn, you cannot do so without inf giving prior information to the bank. So there are certain restrictions regarding withdrawal of money from a savings bank account. First of all, to begin with, most of the banks follow a policy 
where a minimum deposit has to be maintained in the account, but sometimes a bank offers a zero balance account also, and the money deposited in the bank can be withdrawn only five times a month, not repeatedly every day. The bank will not allow a daily withdrawal from a savings bank account. The maximum amount of withdrawals per month is five times. And people who have a savings account also enjoy a minimum amount of interest that on the money that is lying in their bank account. And it is much less in comparison to the other accounts. So the person who needs wants to open an account has to have an introducer to, as to who will help him or who, has, who knows the person. The bank will like to know that, uh, that they, the, who this man is. So an introducer is important. So deposit the application in the bank after the formalities have been completed in their form. Then after the account number has been given, the bank will ask for a minimum deposit, which can be done by the help of a pay-in slip, which will be mentioned and the amount will be mentioned in it. Then the counterfoil will be given to the cash will be given after the money has been deposited with the cashier. And later, a passbook with the money entry will be given. And from time to time, money can be withdrawn from the savings bank account. That is, either through a check or a withdrawal slip from the cash counter. And most of the times, bank asks for the that the withdrawal slip should be accompanied with the passbook. And if a person wants a checkbook facility, then definitely he has to maintain a certain or a bigger amount of money in his savings account. Followed by this, the businessmen are allowed to open a current account. And a current account will help the businessman to withdraw as many times as he wants in a day or in a month. And at the same time, he will also be allowed to deposit any amount of money he wants in his account for the purpose of business. And this account can be either a self-account or a joint account along with the signature of the introducer. So here too, a form has to be taken from the bank and after the formalities have been completed, the name and address, everything, the signature of the depositors, introducers, everything is completed, then the form has to be deposited along with a certain amount of money, minimum amount of money, mentioned in the pay-in slip, where the date is also mentioned. And after this, formalities are completed, he will be given the passbook and the checkbook. Current account holders don't maintain a minimum balance. In fact, the bank charges them a certain amount of service charge for providing them services. And what services? Unlimited withdrawals, issuing of demand drafts, for sending money from one place to another, then encashment of checks of high value. So for this reason, the bank charges them a rate of interest. So these are the formalities or these are the procedures by which we can either open a savings account or a current account. And today, it is, as we all know, if after we open an account, we are given a debit card or ATM card. which will facilitate us to withdraw money from the ATM machines 24 hours a day. And here too, the amount of withdrawals is limited, 
we cannot be withdrawing too many times in a month, then the bank will charge us a certain amount of commission for the service being provided by them. And the other facility which a bank gives to us is credit card. That is from where we can borrow from the bank and buy certain goods and pay the money in installments, in monthly installments. So credit card is another facility which is given not to every customer in a bank, but to whom the bank thinks that they are not, they will not suffer a loss. So credit cards are also given to certain customers. So these are the different privileges we are able to get from the bank after having an account there. So with this, we finish this topic, savings and investment for today. Thank you.